Everybody loves a good old-fashioned story of redemption, especially around the holidays. But have you ever heard of strip church? It may sound paradoxical, but for a group of suburban moms led by one former stripper, it's never too late to be saved. And they've got the prayer circle to prove it. ABC's David Wright joins their leader as she heads back to the clubs for one unlikely recruiting job. Pope John Paul said the opposite of love is not hate, but use, as in using another person for sexual gratification. Okay, guys, if you want to gather around, we're going to pray over the bags. The Christian uh, tradition teaches that love is all about giving yourself to other people. We pray for courage tonight. We pray for humility. And we just pray that you line the security, the bouncers, the management, anybody that's going to get in our way. Lust. That's about taking and coveting, even just taking a glance. Lust in the Christian tradition is a mortal sin, subject to eternal damnation. So why would a group of born-again Christians venture into the lion's den of lust? Because they're missionaries. When I think of missionary work, mm -hmm. I think of Mother Teresa and the poor of Calcutta, th that sort of thing. I don't necessarily think of stiletto heels and a strip joint. Right. But where did Jesus hang out? Hmm. Who's going to go back and love these girls? Someone's got to do it, right? Jamie Hindman used to be one of those girls. Now she leads a group called Divine in Orange County, California, part of the Strip Church Network. Their motto, Jesus loves strippers. They invited us to follow along as they made their rounds Saturday night, distributing care packages, pink paper bags stuffed with goodies. These are salted chocolate chips. How bad can that be? <laughs> Sugary treats and other items. Nail polish or lipstick makes you feel good. Hoping to Everybody win hearts and souls. We feel it's um, a nice little touch that, you know, you can make someone feel loved and feel special that day. Jamie was a stripper for three years. Now she's not just trying to save souls, she's trying to save women and offer them a chance for redemption. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> it's not an easy task. First stop Saturday nights is Starbucks. Pike Place. Grande Pike is. Thank you. After some liquid courage and energy in the form of a latte. Let's do it. Let's load up. It's off to the clubs. Nick, can you go ahead and let us know when we're about five minutes away? First stop, a seedy topless sports bar in Anaheim. Hi, how's it going? Good to see you. The bouncer lets them waltz right in, but not our cameras. We had to wait. Yeah, it was really good. They all were very appreciative to the bags and thanked us for coming and asked us why we did this. Jamie says one girl in particular seemed ready to hear their message. God, she just told us a horrific story about how um, a guy ejaculated on her and um, she was so disgusted she had to pour alcohol over her body to feel clean again. She, she's trying to get out, but she has a family to support. So they were Jamie can relate. She's been there herself. At first, I loved it. It was a party every night. You got I, a lot of attention. I'm I got sure. a lot of attention. Um, I thought I was able to control men, and because men always hurt me in the past. Then, six months after she started stripping, everything changed. I was raped. You were raped. Yes. By one of your customers. One of, one of my customers, exactly. In the strip joint. In the strip joint. After that, and this happened, I got to see the dark world that I was really living in, and I got to see how twisted and, and scary what really was. She says after that, something just switched off inside her. And yet you still kept dancing for two more years. I did, because I, um, I didn't know what else to do. It you got tough. Me. Yeah, real tough, really angry, really tough. And so it was this empty shell of like anger and directed at every man that came in front of me. She's since found Christian compassion even for the men who frequent these places. She sees them as sinners, just as she was. <laughs> Back then I'd say scum of the earth. Today I would say wounded and broken. Guilty of lust. And in our society, it is everywhere. Strip clubs and dollar bills. She says the dark side of this tawdry business tends to get lost in a culture where pop stars like Rihanna celebrate the sexiness of pole dancing. What's the difference between Miley Cyrus twerking and a lap dance you might have to pay extra for at a strip joint? Just the venue and the performer, she says. For the girl that wants to be loved and doesn't come from a good environment and looks to these 
these stars to to resemble and you know be like and oh that must be how it is to be sexy it just helps them think that that's how it's supposed to be and then it puts them in an environment where men that are unhealthy and wounded and broken can take advantage of them. It's knowing that other dancers must feel trapped, just as she did, that motivates her to go to the clubs. But not all the strippers want to be saved. At the Library Gentlemen's Club, we spoke with a dancer who goes by the name Crystal. She asked us not to show her face. She told us stripping paid her way through law school. I graduated law school. I have two kids. I'm working on passing the bar, and I work at a law firm. As soon as I pass, I'm an attorney. And then you'll stop here? I will. I mean, I'll come back and visit. I like it. I appreciate what it's given me in life. And if I'm not inflicting harm upon myself or another human being, it's fine. And lust has paid your way through law school. Absolutely. And it's, it's fun. It's fun to be flirty a little bit. You know, everybody has that side of them, and when you embrace it, it's fun. There's nothing wrong with the human body. And what we do is, is a legal form of entertainment. We have licenses. We pay taxes. We, we do all those things. Do you buy it? No. I don't. She insists she's not trying to save strippers in a moralistic evangelical way, as those booklets included in the pink paper bags would seem to suggest. Jesus loves strippers, obviously, with the Strip Church Network. They have stories from the Bible that just shows that how much Jesus loves these girls and how much God does not judge. She's trying to save them on a much more basic level. 100% of these women do get sexually assaulted or raped in this industry. 100%? 100%, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty high. So wow. when people think they love what they do, you can't. There's, there's no way. Tonight, the bouncer at this club turns them away. Hi, how's it going? We're just here to drop off gifts for the girls. The missionaries are told they can leave their bags outside if they like. There's no way? OK. Which they do. Despite rejections like this, she keeps going because she believes in this mission. I lived in shame of it for 10 years and it still destroyed me because I had no one to talk to about it and I felt like people would be disgusted by who I was. So if someone had come up to you and shown you that there was an afterlife, mm -hmm. there, there was life after stripping, yeah. you would have seized it. Yeah, exactly. After a long Saturday night at the strip joints, she's found her afterlife. Sunday mornings in church. She prays she can help others to follow in her footsteps. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Costa Mesa, California.